Hello, Chuck and Terry here. And we want to do a one year review of our two minute minivan conversion. Let's. Oh my God, it hurts, Shosh. <laughs> One year later, we want to take a look at some of the questions that have come up around our camper, as well as a few observations of our own one year after doing the conversion. This van we bought 10 years ago, and it was on a used car lot. We don't like buying from used car lots, but it ended up turning out really good for us. So it was $13,000. Um, well, purchase price was $13,000. Yeah, all in, taxes title. 95,000 miles, it was a 2005, so that means it was five years old. So we felt pretty good about the purchase, a little bit nervous uh, with that many miles on it. And when we bought it, I think I recall saying, we will never exceed 150,000 miles on this van because we were only using it for camping. Previously, mm -hmm. we were using our Toyota Matrix to camp and we thought, Oh my God, look at the space compared to a Toyota Matrix. But anyway, it ended up being a lot. We love the amount of room in here. Mm -hmm. um, but right now we have 217,000 miles on this and have had no major issues. So taking it all the way to Seattle, we've taken it to Texas, to Florida, all over the country, and we've never had a major issue. And we still have, feel very comfortable driving it uh, all the way to North Carolina and almost, you know, monthly. So when we first got the van, we took all the seats out and we just threw a full-size mattress in the back, just a basic spring mattress. But because of the slope and the irregularity, I had to listen to him constantly complain Not about me. how bad his back nope, hurt. I didn't complain, I just took it like a man. So we wanted to do a little bit of an upgrade back then, so... The back side of the van, it really sloped here where the third row seating was at. So we built this wood platform and this door with, on hinges. Now we've removed the hinges, but that gave us sort of a trunk here that we could put stuff in and the, made the floor really flat. And so that we did that 10 years ago. So this is still in place. Now we simply, we still use this as a cargo van. So we move a lot of stuff with this back and forth between here and North Carolina, but at any rate, um, if you remove this completely, um, it's a perfect, it's perfect for the new bed. So we started um, a little over a year ago thinking, hey, we're going to get a ProMaster or a Sprinter van. And hey, we really couldn't swing it last year. So we said, hey, let's let's go all in on our minivan and really build it out. So that's how we got started with, I'll call it our, our stage two sure. of our build. So. <laughs> She's just going with that, whatever I say now. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna put the bed in and so how this little platform we built out of two by twos and plywood really has helped. A lot of it, I don't really remember how I put it together. And quite frankly, um, I was really just very careful about putting screws. You can see some of these screws that I have in here, um, building out this platform. I was really careful because the gas tank is right sort of in the center here underneath. And this whole basin is is pretty free uh, to put screws in without damaging anything. Uh, again, you need to inspect your own van. This one is a specific, you know, it's a 2005 uh, Sienna, but having this uh, little wood um, frame here uh, really did offer us a lot of flexibility in, <laughs> in a dirt uh, to add these, um, these platforms here, as well as what's most important is the ability to screw in uh, the bed. So that was actually key. All we have to do is put the two screws in to the wood frame and the bed is secure. So other people have asked, can we access the jack and also can we access the spare tire? So we're going to cover both of those. It's not easy. So um, we do have to, a couple of these tabs that have to come undone. You can get the door out like that. Um, and then the jack itself, you have to sort of twist this to get it to loosen up a little bit. But it does come out. It's a little bit tight. Um, Got to sort of maneuver it a little bit. And then uh, as it relates to the spare tire, which is under the van, we're going to take a look at that next. <laughs> So just behind the passenger seat here is a little bit of a tab here. And you can see that the bed doesn't obscure it really at all. 
to make yourself a little bit more space, you could fill, fold the bad back there. But it, you get access to this little uh, nut here and there's a special tool that comes inside your pack. It's really hard to find if you haven't been in there because it's packed in a little black leather uh, case. But uh, just put that over the top there and you have the ability to start uh, pulling that pulling that out. So it just basically drops your your tire to the ground and then you can simply with a cable and then you can take it off. So let's talk about the solar panels. We have two solar panels, one at 10 watts and one at 20 watts. And I like the flexible ones because you they're so low profile. I literally just glued them with silicone and caulk. This one has been here, oh gosh, for 10 years, I'm sure. Uh, and it's still working fine. Uh, the cables I just ran up and uh, zip tied them along the frame here. Uh, added this 20 watt uh, later. This one I actually put over the ribs and you can see I caulked uh, where there was a gap here. Um, and in the back, there's actually a gap underneath uh, the panel there. And I've had no flipping, flapping or anything like that. It allows air to get underneath and uh, cool, keep the solar panels cool. They operate much better uh, when it's cool. So both of these have been really positive for me. And you can't even see them um, when you're driving down the road. Um, and they take up literally no space, no drag on the car at all. Um, the wires just run along the rack here and then uh, down through, see a little bit of dirt there, uh, down through the door here. And I just put a little bit of silicone caulk and stuck the cable there. Um, it stays really well. And then just tucked it in underneath the light here and uh, then comes into the cabin there. So we've had a lot of questions about the Reflectix. It's normally silver. Um, it comes in tubes, I believe, uh, rolls that are like 24 inches by 20 feet, 25 feet, something like that. So one roll did our whole van. Um, and I spray painted them black on one side and white on the other because the white made it brighter inside the van. The black was just too dark. It just felt like a cave. But the black on the outside at night is just really good because you can't see in and it's not obvious that we've done that. The paint is flecking off. It's not staying on like I'd like. Um, I think in the future, if we did it again, I might try that um, Flex Seal paint and see if that would work because it has flexibility to it. But when I measured these to put them in place, I squished them in and I took a Sharpie and I made it the line around the window where I creased it. And then I cut it just a tick bigger so that when you put them in the window, you just kind of push them in place. And because they're just slightly bigger, they stay. So you don't have to do anything to them other than just put them in place and they stay. And they really look uh, natural. Why don't you close the door? They really super, I mean, super natural uh, on the outside at night or even during the day, you really can't even tell there's reflectix, reflectix there. I mean, there is slightly tinted windows there, um, but it actually looks so much better than the silver. Um, the only one that we didn't cut ourselves was the front. Which right, the front was specially made because it's a wider window, so I didn't get, was able to get reflectix long enough, you know, wide enough, I guess. And it was specially made for the Sienna that one we, I did not paint. I left that one silver because during the day, if we do want to leave it, then it will reflect the sunlight as opposed to absorb the sunlight like the black does. So the Reflectix we use for the windows is just a night thing. So we've also had questions about our iPad holder. Um, I forget exactly what Amazon calls this. It's actually for like a cookbook holder in the kitchen, but to hold your iPad. But anyway, so what we did here is it, it comes with two of these mounting brackets um we got, so we put one on each side of the van but prior to installing it we didn't want to put it straight on the vinyl because the vinyl wasn't flat and we really needed a flat surface so chuck cut two pieces of plywood i painted them gray and then we attached the plywood first to the van and then we attached the holders to the plywood and that way it gave it a nice flat surface so that we could put the holder in and out. And the thing about this is you can actually use it like that as well. These, these spread and out. These too. spread out. Yeah. So that's why it's a kitchen tabletop cookbook holder, iPad holder. Um, 
but it comes with these two. There's a link in there. And, and everything that we have links for, we have paid for everything. We have no paid endorsements um, for anything that we use right. in our van. These are just things that we like. These are adjustable um, as far as to tighten them up. We've had to tighten it a few times. This one's a little tricky because unless you think about taking the caps off to tighten it up, it'll drive you crazy if it starts falling and then you discover later you can tighten it. Another feature that we really haven't even covered in any of our videos is little making these little wood features that uh, allow us to store different things. And this was actually from our first build 10 years ago. It's held up very nicely and actually built this to perfectly fit a box of Kleenex, uh, glasses, chargers, things like that all fit in here right behind the passenger seat. Love that. And we also had a couple back here. Um, and uh, so these, this was to hold my iPad um cell phone but that was back when cell phones were smaller now they keep getting bigger and it doesn't fit anymore um but this is just made out of uh some plywood quarter inch um and half inch uh cross pieces um and i've simply screwed it in and right into the vinyl same one over here lots of different spaces to to uh keep stuff um little pouches up here for uh, different varying things terry likes having this little bag here for stuff this we got on our last trip. We actually use this little light a lot. So even though we have different lights, it allows us to hang it on the door uh, for um, every, you know when we're cooking at things at night. The other thing is uh, a lot of chargers. So um, you can see this charger station uh, right over here. Three different chargers available. This is Terry's side of the bed. Uh, works really nice over here. I made the mistake of hooking up this. I disconnected the, the car uh, supply and hooked it up to the lithium battery and that ended up becoming a little bit of a problem because when you put a charger in here and you lift up the bed uh, back frame, it pops it out. So that needs to be remedied. So we've had many questions about when we put the tent on the back of our van that the lights are now on, all the interior lights are on and does it drain our battery? Well, it'd be really kind of hard to sleep at night if the lights were on. So there's a switch at the front of our van. And I do know on newer vans, it's actually up here. But on our van, it's right on the dash. And you just simply turn them off. So there's been also a lot of questions about the lithium battery and why I store it up front. Covered some of that in some previous videos. I do like it keeping it on this side of the firewall. Uh, additionally, it saves a lot of space back there, which we need. Um, but the way I did this, and there's a, you can't really see here, but there is a, a pretty large zip tie here that we keep it uh, in. And I got to take it out anyway because we store it inside during the winter. So I've cut the zip tie. Uh, I'll, I'll use a new one in the spring. Um, and you can see it's, these 50 amp hour batteries are super light. Um, so I can remove it here and show that I put. Another, just a battery tray here, and this battery tray, it's cut, so it's smaller, but if you look down here, I've put another, basically, uh, piece of metal here, I actually used aluminum, um, and bent it in place uh, to put this new tray, battery tray in here. And this will stay off, essentially, uh, this battery will stay out of here all winter. The other thing, a lot of questions around the cord reel, and uh, that, that cord reel has actually been in there 10 years, and I had to actually look in here because I couldn't remember how I did it, but it's become a little bit more clear now. Um, again, it has lasted 10 years, um, and essentially what I've done is I welded uh, a bracket there uh, to the frame to allow me to hang that uh, cord reel. Essentially, it's a little bracket like this that I've welded, um, and that allows me to, um, you know, I can screw that back in and, and it keeps it really secure. Um, when you pull it out, so I've got another one here. This one I pulled out of my garage this morning. And you'll notice the part that you pull out has basically the female sides of the plug, um, but that's not gonna work at a campsite. So you have to actually cut this off right here at the cord and replace it with a male plug, which I've done here. Um, the other thing is on the other side where it plugs in, you have to cut that off also and replace it with a female side. So 
you're basically switching those two around so you're gonna have to buy at least two of those um, little adapters that you screw on and I'm sure there's plenty of electrical videos out there showing you how to do that um, and then I ran the cord actually underneath uh, the van zip tied it and uh, brought it uh, into the into the cabin here and uh, up through um, actually snipping off the female side of the plug and then feeding it through there and then uh, it allowed me to plug in this electrical strip here again we don't use it very often because we found that there's really not much need for 110 uh, when we're camping and, and quite frankly that's why we didn't put an inverter in uh, we have uh, solar on our house and inverters so we know how to do that in a minivan we just didn't see any use for that we've also had a few questions about our tent when we put the tent on the back of the van um the biggest question is why well for us having the tent on affords us rain cover and wind cover if we need to cook in the kitchen if it's windy or raining it also acts as ventilation at night um, so we can leave this open especially on warmer nights and we just need to get some air moving through so that's been a plus as well as you end up with this much more room in the van so that's another what, three feet of space um especially when you're sleeping at night and you want to move your arms around it's been great as well as when we have the drawer we can pull the drawer out and it serves as a nightstand as well so it has lots of benefits for us so we really do like the tent um never felt unsafe with it on we do pick and choose when we use it is all the comments about our music so ultimately the music was my choice uh, we are in our upper 50s but we still really love rock and roll um, and we've learned from those comments and we've listened and you can see from many of our other videos we've toned it down a bit um, but at any rate we thought that we were doing the videos essentially for ourselves we didn't think we'd get the number of views that we got and in fact she thought it would max out Actually, you didn't even think we'd get a thousand views and we had that in a week. So, so we or, thank all of you viewers yes, because we it's do been thank a lot you. of fun. It's been a lot of fun and we do want to address. Uh, we, it's, it, for us, it's all about building and sharing and so that you can do the same thing. Um, and so ultimately, how do we feel about the camper? Two, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for this camper. One year later, we still love it. <laughs>